Hello everyone, happy Monday. Welcome back to Coffee and Headlines, our morning get together live here on Facebook, where we take a look at the latest headlines from our city, our state, and our country. We take a look at cultural um, tidbits, uh, things that help us connect with our city, with our destination, Puerto Vallarta, as a community of English speaking locals. We take a look at your comments, your ideas, your suggestions. We put it all together so that we can take better advantage of everything our city has to offer. Today is August 1st, another month begins, and here we are. So happy to see you all. It's great that I, I'm loving your comments this morning. Um, somebody said, I hope nobody floated away. <laughs> we wanted rain, didn't we? Today we're gonna talk about how much rain we got. Well, we know that we got shit tons of rain. We don't know exactly how much rain we got, but we know that, you know, there was a lot of rain and we asked for it and we're going to talk about that. We're going to talk about other interesting news. We're going to talk about Mexican wine. Do you like Mexican wine? And if you don't, I'm going to give you good reasons to like Mexican wine more than you actually do or to at least go out and experience the pleasure of drinking good Mexican wine. Uh, we're also going to talk about the Federación Bridge and we're going to talk about Marines all over the place. We're going to talk about all kinds of fun and interesting and important stuff. But first, let us welcome everyone and anyone that is here, and particularly those of you that are joining us for the first time live. Feel free to uh, write the word new in your comments, and um, we will be so very happy to give you a nice little welcome. And if you have something important to say or something that you're looking for a reaction like Dan just did, he added a capital Q at the beginning of your of his message. Plane tickets have been purchased. We will arrive in Puerto Vallarta Sunday, October 24th. 10 weeks and six days, 10 weeks. Is that how many weeks there are until I can enjoy caramel popcorn again? Just come back soon, Dan and Kathy. We miss you very much over here. And I want my caramel popcorn. Just kidding. Um, so anyhow, this is what we have. This is what we do. Let us get started and see what we have in store for the cluster today. Well, <laughs> it was around 10 p.m. on Saturday evening that <laughs> it happened. This massive thunderstorm moved in over Puerto Vallarta. There was a lot of wind. There was a lot of rain and a lot of thunder and lightning. Shit tons of it. Just a bunch of it. As usual, Medina Asensio flooded. Francisco Villa flooded. Um, surrounding streets and neighborhoods flooded. <clears throat> Through the storm, our civil protection service had to attend 20 or so emergency requests ranging from two women that ended up trapped inside of their flooded car 
to a person that was dragged to the ocean, unable to swim back. One person reportedly associated with a restaurant called Margarita Grill uh, went missing in the ocean um, and has yet to be found. There were fallen trees and power outages, such as the one reported on Facebook by Michael Buford, preventing restaurants and other businesses from doing their work. A wall fell down in Cinco de Diciembre along Guayabo Street, where two individuals had to seek refuge elsewhere. Vehicles parked at the parking lot on uh, Juarez Street right before you enter Emiliano Zapata were unable to leave the parking lot simply because there was too much water at street level. But this is this is how it goes when it rains like that. And um, and it did make the night a lot fresher. I don't know where you were or where you got trapped where it, when it started raining, I was peacefully at home, just chilling, thank goodness, and and enjoyed a wonderful night's sleep. I feel sad and sorry for those people who suffered any kind of negative outcomes from the rain, and I hope that everybody that we know and love is doing okay. But it was quite a storm. We don't get storms like that on a regular basis, but this one was, was definitely a good one. Now, it is not all Stormy news, Jalisco's Tourism Secretary Vanessa Perez Lamas informed that now that Puerto Vallarta is registering numbers that are higher than those prior to the pandemic, with hotel occupancy above 85% on weekends, we are now out of the economic recovery phase that we so much mentioned during the pandemic and moving more into a growing phase as far as tourism is concerned. She was quoted by saying, Vallarta is the destination in the state that has fared most favorably during the pandemic, which doesn't mean that other destinations are not doing well. Now, does this mean that we can no longer blame the pandemic for our woes? I suppose now that the pandemic is pretty much over, or well, I'm not over in a sense that we shouldn't be careful with our habits, but it's over as far as economic development is concerned. Well, I suppose we cannot continue to blame the pandemic for our misery. Moving right along, um, the Federacion Bridge north of Puerto Vallarta continues to appear in the news now with statements made by Jalisco Governor Enrique Alfaro uh, to the effect that he will continue to put pressure on Mexico's president, Andres Manuel Lopez Obrador, so that the construction of the bridge actually takes place, reminding us that this is a specific promise that Lopez Obrador made to the people of Puerto Vallarta. The bridge which connects Ixtapa in Puerto Vallarta and San Vicente in Bahia de Banderas is expected to cost over 700 million pesos. Now, just to make sure that we're all understanding why this is that important, I am going to extrapolate, if I may. We've shown you where the bridge is located or is going to be located in the map. And, um, and the reason this is becoming pressing is because the closer we get to the completion of the fast Guadalajara to Puerto Vallarta Highway, the, the closer we get to a point in which the influx of vehicles coming from that highway is going to create some kind of funnel effect the closer you get to Banderas Bay. So as you approach towns north of the city, it'll become increasingly important to have more than one main access to the city so that vehicles can be diverted more specifically to where they are headed. I know that we've never been in the road that leads to Puente Federación because it, right now it's in the middle of nowhere. But in a matter of two to five years, that bridge is going to be absolutely fundamental for traffic to be able to enter our city without overloading it. So we hope that Federación Bridge is going to be completed at some point. Moving right along, I have this one. Although we haven't discussed this much in the past few weeks, it is worth mentioning that many of the local dependencies here in the city, such as our traffic department and our police department, are now jointly overseen by both local officials and active members of Mexico's National Guard. And in this last latest headline, 
um, we learned that whenever you see nowadays local policemen on patrol, you're actually seeing a combination of local police forces and members of the Marine. Now, you, you are probably wondering, like I am wondering, why is this happening and is this good or bad? Um, I'm going to be honest with you, I don't know. At surface level, it would seem to be, um, actually, it's, 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 I want to believe that it's a good thing. At, at surface level, it would seem to be that the addition of uh, National Guard forces increases our level of security. Um, but the flip side of that is that, you know, was security and where these departments in Puerto Vallarta so poorly run that the National Guard had to intervene? I'm actually not sure. I'm actually not sure as to why this is happening or, or, or the outcome of it. But I would like to believe that now that we have a joint force with local authorities involved and the National Guard involved, this will result in a more secure, less corrupt city. And we can only hope for that. Um, and speaking of secure and corrupt, another person that continues to be in the news is Salvador Llamas. Uh, direct, director of CEAPAL, um, and I'm still not sure whether he's a good guy or a bad guy. You know, he came in to be in charge of CEAPAL, but he represents our mayor in a lot of public events, whereas his daytime job is running CEAPAL. He says after hours he is the advisor for, for Mayor Michel, and this is a little fishy, and a lot of city council people have not let go of the fact that there is just something weird about this guy. Um, he's back in the news because of he lacks because of the fact that he doesn't have this the level of schooling required to be a member of the current administration, and uh, you have to have by law a certain level of schooling, which he doesn't have. And now it turns out that in his official file. Um, in the government archives, he states that he lives at Francisco Villa and Manuel Avila Camacho streets, which is the address of Seapal. So is he living in his office or, or what's the deal? Now, personally, I couldn't care less where Salvador Llamas is living, but there are just a bunch of irregular things surrounding this guy. And Seapal is, of course, doing all kinds of wonderful things for the city, but it's all too strange. I'm just putting it out there because that's what the news are saying. And um, I don't know if in a year or two or maybe less, we're going to find out something evil about the dude. But it's what the news delivered today. Now, let's take a look at the weather and see what we can expect for the beginning of the week. Oh, yes. Snarky Weather says, rest in peace, Lieutenant Uhura. And if you know what that means, I I was sad yesterday when I learned that Nichelle Nichols had passed away over the weekend. Uh, one of the first African-American women to to be on television. And she was a trailblazer. Live long and prosper. Right now, it is 27 degrees. Feels like 31. Humidity is at 86 percent, which is not so bad. <laughs> Our temperature in Fahrenheit degrees is 81, and our forecast for this Monday is rain and humidity through the day with a high of 30 and a low of 25. Tomorrow, Tuesday, we can expect rain in the evening and overnight with a high of 31 and a low of 25. And Wednesday, rain in the evening with light and variable winds uh, with a high of 32 and a low of of 25 so it'll continue to rain through the beginning of the week let's hope it's not crazy rain like we had over the weekend but good enough rain that we can all feel a little fresher um moving right along let us talk about mexican wine and why not we love mexican wine but there was this bit of news that just made me laugh. Mexico's Valle de Guadalupe wine region in Baja California was ranked the third best wine region in 2022, according to USA Today's 10 Best Reader Choice Awards uh, for this year. And and I'm like, well, it's, it's about time that the United States, and I'm going to generalize here, it's about time that our friends from north of the border begin acknowledging um, 
the importance and the, the, the deliciousness of Mexican wine. Um, I have a lot of anecdotal stories of my friend Nina Goodhope, uh, who is, is a former wine purveyor here in Puerto Vallarta. She used to have a beautiful wine shop in Colonia Emiliano Zapata, of how she would get a lot of customers walking in and saying, do you have California wines? And she's like, no, I don't carry California wines, but we have beautiful Mexican wines and South American wines. And people would say, no, we want wines from California. And uh, it is amazing um, to realize that a lot of people are reluctant to appreciate Mexican wines for what they're worth. In fact, there are a lot of people out there that don't even know that Mexico has amazing wines. So what happened to Mexico's wine industry? Well, it all boils down to one stupid decision made in 1595. Yes, 1595. Um, King Philip II was in charge in Spain. And at the time, of course, Spanish conquistadors had come to Mexico and they had brought seeds of this, that, and the other. And among the seeds that they brought, they brought grape seeds and, um, and um, wine started being developed in Mexico and the temperature was perfect and the land was perfect in some parts of the country. But Mexican wine in the 1500s became so good that it was starting to compete with Spanish wines. I mean, Spanish wines made in Spain, you know, like the big boats that came to, to, to Nueva España started going back to Spain with bottles of wine that had been created here and uh, it became competition. So in 1595, Philip II, King of Spain, said, no, 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 we're not having that. The only wine that I'm authorizing in Mexico is wine for churches, just your basic wine that you use during, during Mass. So because of this, the wine industry suffered a tremendous, um, it was frozen, it was frozen in Mexico. And this is why we now have more beer drinkers than wine drinkers in our country. Um, and, um, and this is why wine was developed so um, profusely in South America. But of course, those of us that know, know that there are amazing wines to be found here in Mexico. And if you haven't had the pleasure of exploring Mexican wines, you know, I encourage you to do that. There was a new wine bar in the city um, that, that offers Mexican wines. So you can always stop by there. You can always ask for recommendations when you go to restaurants. But if you are the kind of person that has thought, well, I didn't know that Mexico has great wines, I'm just going to say, give them a go whenever or wherever you can. Um, there's a couple of great wines that I love. One is Jardín Secreto by Adobe Guadalupe. is just wonderful wine, not too expensive. Um, then there's uh, Gran Ricardo by Monte Chanique. That is expensive, but it's really good. You can find it at Costco. There are a bunch of great wines from Mexico that, that you may want to explore at one point or another. And this brings us to the end of the news. Let me now switch over to your comments just to see what everybody's up to. Oh, Raymond, I hope your ears buzzed on Saturday afternoon. It's great to see you. Saturday afternoon, I finished the broadcast and I have such a craving for a moist muffin. I mean, the kind that just gets stuck on your palate. I really have to have a muffin. So I figured, where do I go? Well, I went to Artisan Bakery, of course. But most of the good stuff was already sold out. So I had to leave Artisan Bakery with the last um, pecan sticky bun roll chingadera. I left with a bag of Mexican uh, wedding cookies or pedos de monja or monks farts as we call them. And I left with a ginormous oatmeal cookie. And this was my sugar rush for the whole weekend. So the lesson to be learned here, if you want to enjoy delicious bread and pastries from Artisan Bakery, you want to get there early. The end. 
Let's see what else we have. Boom, 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 And Claude, it's great to see you. I went out and played with my friends on Saturday afternoon. We went back to, um, oh my goodness, we went back to Los Cuentos Tap Room and once again enjoyed delicious beer and delicious um, Oaxacan-inspired cuisine. And, and I put A and B together because I hadn't realized this before. If you go early, they have happy hour. I mean, our bill was so ridiculously small, we felt compelled to leave extra money for tip just because the service was, was fantastic. It was absolutely great. And from there, we walked over to Whiskey Kitchen. And at Whiskey Kitchen, we just had a, a well, more food and more wine and more merriment. And this, of course, reminds me of the fact that tomorrow... Tomorrow night, we are enjoying Why Not Dinner at Whiskey Kitchen Versailles. I would like to remind you of this. Starting at 6 p.m., we'll be there. Why? Why not? Actually, the reason we're there is because we know that Gina's other location was broken into a week ago, and we want to do whatever we can by, you know, spending some pesitos at Whiskey Kitchen or leaving some hugs there or some good vibes there. Um, and it is important to do that whenever we can. So if you have no dinner plans tomorrow night and you would like to join us at Whiskey Kitchen, that's where we are going to be. Let's see what else we have. Alan says happy birthday to his wife. Happy birthday, Yolanda. Um, I hope you have a wonderful, wonderful day. Let's see what else. Mexican wine. Yes, please, says Brian. We love Mexican wine. We absolutely love Mexican wine. Then we have a comment here from Colleen. The pedestrian road by the river was not shut down yesterday. We take our dogs every Sunday. Are they still going to shut down the road? The pedestrian road by the river. Um... I can think of quite a few pedestrian roads by the river, Colleen. I am afraid I cannot be of help here because I don't know specifically what river you're talking about or what pedestrian road. So um, I'm sorry I don't have an answer for you. I hope somebody else does. Uh, let's see. Let's see. Do -de -do -de -de -do. That kind of looks like when your cat got... My car got drowned. Oh, yes, yes. My car died in one of those storms. And it's still dead. And it's going to continue to be dead. And I'm going to continue to be carless because that seems to be my fate. Uh, let's see what else we have. David comments on pictures that people have posted. Yes, a lot of people have posted photographs on Facebook. And it was it was quite quite something. Um, Brian comments, a large parade of police and National Guard went up and down the 200 this morning. Um, I think that's a good thing. I hope it was not because of a specific incident, but thank you for letting us know. Um, Uncork Mexico is a great online wine shop here in Puerto Vallarta. Thank you very much for that recommendation, Jill. Um... And Pam is working from home this week. It's great to be able to watch. It's great to say hello. Hello, Pam. I hope things are good at your end of things. Um, -bum 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 -bum. Dave comments on Valle de Guadalupe, our wine country in the Baja California area. Not only are there superior vineyards, the contemporary cuisine restaurants are off the charts. I must say, Dave, that this is a part of Mexico that I've never had the opportunity to explore. But I would love to um, I would love to learn more about that area of Mexico. I would love to visit someday. So there you have it. Um, Raymond, I'm not coming on to you, but your sticky buns are absolutely sticky <laughs> and wonderful. I love the one that I had. Uh, let's see what else. Los Muertos Brewing is also great for happy hour and great pizza. Yeah, that's great to know, Paula. There's a great branch of Los Muertos Brewing not far from, from my place. So I'll have to give that a go one of these days. Thank you for the tip. 
Uh, let's see. Sherry, you are a good cluster member. Well, we know that. But to know that you purchased four gift certificates from Whiskey Kitchen is is great news. It feels good. It feels good to do good things, doesn't it? Uh, let's see. Oh, wonderful. Brian, you guys made it to the Mojoneras Tianguis yesterday with Amiga Luisa. Oh, how funny. That is great. That is great that you guys tagged along and decided to go. Maybe if we see you tomorrow at Whiskey Kitchen, you can tell us more of your adventures. That would be absolutely wonderful. Uh, and David once again says, um, if anyone is able to do it, a trip to Valle de Guadalupe in the northern Baja is totally worth it. Tons of great little wineries. Again, I have heard that uh, it is it is something really wonderful out there. And of course, I've had many of the wines from the wineries and they are absolutely delicious. Sheila even recommends a specific article from Mex Connect. There you have it. I'm looking forward to reading that. Ah, this one is, of course, about Parras de la Fuente, which is the oldest winery in the Americas. I forgot to mention that fact, that Casa Madero in Parras de la Fuente is the oldest winery. But again, the whole operation was shut down thanks to uh, lovely King Philip II. But it's good that we have the wines to discover nowadays. And this, of course, brings us to the end of Coffee and Headlines for today. It's going to be a busy week. Today, I'm having the pleasure of joining some friends and discovering a restaurant that is new to me in Fluvial. And I'll be reporting about this restaurant either tomorrow or the day after. And then, of course, um, you know, there are outings and this, that, and the other. And, of course, where is it? Where is my thingy thingy? Of course, this is this coming Saturday will be the Arte Vallarta Museo Night of the Iguana Party, where you are expected to wear something uh, from one of the characters of Night of the Iguana. And I'm not, because I'm not going to do that. That's just the person that I am. But, you know, I'm wondering if you watch the movie, if you figure out what you're going to wear, maybe I'll bring some maracas so that I can pretend that I'm Pepe or Pedro or something like that. Anyhow, I hope you have a great week. I hope um, that we will connect again with each other soon, um, hopefully tomorrow. Between now and then, stay happy, stay calm, stay, stay healthy, and most importantly, stay in touch. Have a great Monday.